One of the main selling points of the DJI Pocket 2 is its small compact size. In this video I'm going to show you 10 creative and unusual ways to use this amazing camera gimbal. Give your shots that cinematic look without breaking the bank and only with just some simple accessories. I will be showing you not only the end result but also how I do it so you can see how you can easily add those high-end shots to your videos. I'll be using some basic accessories, some of them you may already have anyway. Myself, I'll be using a monopod, a couple of camera clamps, a smartphone holder and an actual phone. I will also be using the doodle handle with the Pocket 2 so that I can control the camera wirelessly. If you don't have the doodle handle, you'll have to do it directly through an extension cable. Just bear in mind that they come in 3.3 feet. So depending on the length of your pole, you might need to get a couple of those cables. Anyway, without further ado, let's get the show going. So here we are in busy central London, home of some of the biggest and most expensive Hollywood movies over the last couple of decades. And what better place to show you how to replicate those cinematic, amazing camera shots that will add incredible production value to your videos. Excuse me, could you uh, move? Uh, uh, quick, 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 quick. That look all right, no? Yeah. The best way to introduce the scene is by providing establishing shot. And the absolute coolest way to do it is by doing a jib shot. Now, let's imagine for instance that you are in a cool location like where we are today in Piccadilly Circus. It could be just as good as Times Square in New York or any other fancy location. Getting permission to shoot with a jib in a location like that, first is gonna cost you a fortune. And then the logistics are horrendous. You probably need to get permission from your local council, the mayor office, and the list goes on. With something this small, you could literally spend half an hour, even an hour, filming, getting all the shots that you want, and most people wouldn't even realize that you're there. You simply start at the bottom and then lift up to reveal the location where the action is going to take place. Honestly, these type of shots are so dynamic that we lift your production values instantly. And the rig itself is relatively small, so most people won't even notice that you're filming. Frame your shot carefully, lift up the camera, and when it's as high as it can go, you stand up, and outreach as far as you can go while keeping movement consistently. And this is really important. The secret here is to avoid any jerky moves that will throw off your viewers. The result? A cool and smooth Hollywood style jeep shot that reveals the location and sets the scene perfectly. If you add moving elements like cars or people running, it looks even better and very high end. And when you're done, you're gone in less than it takes for anyone to notice that you were there in the first place. A variation of the shot that we've just seen is the moving jib or techno crane. Personally, I love this shot. It's incredible, adds so much production value to any video. And all you need to do really is introduce movement to the shot. You could even replicate the jib shot, but this time moving as your subject comes into the frame. Then follow them and finally stretch up to reveal the location. This looks amazing with car commercials, but just think about the possibilities. It's not going to be the same as the real thing, but have you ever shot with the techno crane? This setup on the other hand is so tiny that you can do this time and time again until you get it right. And by the time you're done, the techno crane crew will still be unloading the fly cases from the truck. This shot now is the same as the Jeep shot, but with a slight variation. Simply by adding some foreground elements, you're not only adding depth to the shot, but also enhancing the camera movement. Having something in the foreground can literally make a boring crane shot look amazing. And if you're in a location with trees or lots of street furniture, honestly, this is the way to go. The results are way better than just using a wide establishing shot to introduce a video scene. The best part, when you're done, you pack and go in less than one minute. Another advantage of having the Pocket 2 attached to a pole or monopod or similar is that you can get brilliant shots through holes, gaps in between trees or similar. The tighter the gap, the better and more spectacular the shot will be as you actually take advantage of the Pocket 2's small size. Honestly, this little hack would add so much production value to your videos and if you set the gimbal to FPV and rotate as you move in, you can create some pretty cool effects. And it's so simple to do as well. Simply find the location that you want to film, look around for anything you can fit the Pocket 2 through and you're good to go. Obviously, there are more ways to put this camera to good use and you can experiment and try as many variations as you can think of until you find something that works for you. Sometimes pulling back is easier than moving in and depending on what you're filming, you just reverse it in post. 
I can guarantee you people will think you're spending some serious money to create your videos when in actual fact you're not. <laughs> We've nearly got kicked out of this location and this uh, illustrates perfectly uh, my point about this camera gimbal and how much you can get away. Um, we were filming in Covent Garden, um, a very nice uh, location. We just found out that apparently it's private property. We didn't know that. And security came because we were using a tripod, <laughs> believe it or not. And they asked us to stop uh, recording for the simple fact that we were using a tripod. So if we were doing handheld, we could pretty much do whatever we want. But the moment you put a tripod on the floor, you need to ask for permission, you have to pay a fee, and the logistics, back to what I was telling you earlier in the video, it's an absolute nightmare. And this is a small camera. Imagine if you go with a full-size cinema crew. I, I just don't even want to go in there. With this setup, you can get away with anything. Nobody's gonna come and tell you anything. The guy looked at this, he thought it was a Mickey Mouse rig. He actually laughed at it. So we, we could be here filming for two hours, nobody would come to us, you know? The Pocket 2 is so small that you can literally put it inside almost any small opening and get some brilliant shots that will be very hard to get with any other camera. And I mean literally. It's not just through, let's say, a jacket sleeve, but through tubes, cylinders, fences, gaps in walls. I mean, just think about it. The amount of options and creative angles that you can do, it's mind-blowing. This is another variant of the standard jeep shot, but this one can potentially double the distance the camera travels compared to starting at ground level, giving you an even more spectacular effect. For this to work, you rely on finding a spot where you can start at a lower angle and then crane up. But if you find one and are able to add an element in the foreground that you can crane over and reveal the scene, the results are mind-blowing. Now we can all agree that the Pocket 2 is not an action cam, but if you attach it to a chest cam, like I have it here, you can turn it into a very effective action cam and get some really amazing and stabilized footage. Let me show you. It's not just riding a bike and getting the scenery around you. It's shots like if you're into making films, following someone running fast ahead of you or even behind you if you mount this on your back. Normally you would need a Steadicam or gimbal operator running for his life to keep up with the person running and they can never run fast enough. <laughs> with this little hack, just mount it on your chest and you can go really fast. And not just on roads but also off-road. You can kick it pretty fast and the gimbal will keep the camera really smooth and stable. The secret here is not to mount the Pocket 2 to the actual bike's frame but to your body. The body will act as a vibration isolator and then the gimbal does the rest and the results are brilliant. The Atlanta transition has to be one of the coolest and most amazing transitions between locations or scenes. I absolutely love this one. With the pole extended as far as it can comfortably go, set the Pocket 2 to FPV and then do the same arc and motion for two or even three shots. The ideal scenario would be locations where you have a natural starting and end point so you can easily join them in post. The key here is to keep the motion consistent as you do the semicircular arc in all your locations. When you stitch them together in post, the results are honestly amazing. Just don't overdo it though, because it looks so good that you, you will be tempted. But as a transition between two locations, it's brilliant. You could even speed ramp it if the transition looks a little bit off and it will definitely help making it smooth. For this next shot, we're going to use an electric micro dolly and in order to show you, we're going to need to move to the studio. The shots that I'm going to show you now with an electric micro dolly, these are shots that I absolutely love. And with any smartphone or even larger cameras, you would struggle simply because of the size. It's not impossible, but with the Pocket 2, you get set up in no time. All you need is an electric micro dolly, a small head mount and the gimbal itself. Set the angle and the speed that you want and off you go. It really is that simple. You can get some pretty cool low angle shots. Honestly, shots like these with larger cameras can be a logistical nightmare, but with the Pocket 2, they are so easy to do. This thing is so small that you can pretty much attach it to anything and get some really cool and interesting shots. For instance, you could attach it to the tip of a snooker cube and get some really interesting shots as it hits the ball. You would struggle to get that with any other camera or smartphone simply because size. If you're into food, for instance, you could uh, attach it to the handle of a knife and get some really nice and unique shots of uh, cutting food. 
if you're into horror movies, for instance, you could get some really nice and interesting reflections on the blade of the knife. And if you do 120 and 240 frames a second with any of those examples that I've given you, you get some really nice and interesting slow-mo. So as you can see, it's entirely up to you, your creativity and how much you want to experiment, but the possibilities are, are there. This is it guys, these are my 10 cool and creative shots with the Pocket 2. And I'm sure there are more and I'm just literally scratching the surface, but hopefully I've given you enough inspiration to try and experiment yourself. Bottom line is that the functionality that you get out of this camera gimbal is phenomenal. And even if you use it as B camera or C camera, you can genuinely increase the production value of your videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Even better, subscribe to the channel and help us grow and continue doing videos on a weekly basis. And we'll see you in the next video.